this is a modern Mahjong Zoom with a twist. We know a lot of people love our virtual vintage and love the beautiful tiles. And we just recently shared a PDF on YouTube and it just shows all the different tiles because we could, we would be very um, wealthy if we were able to sell all the ivory sets that people told us that they had. <laughs> so a lot of times it's bone and bamboo, it's Bakelite, also known as Catalan. So that's a really great thing to look over and learn from the different types of tiles. So today's video, we just want to say, is only about painting Bakelite or Catalan, not bone or bamboo or ivory or whatever. So it's very limited. So we want to make sure you guys don't clean your other types of tiles, wash them, paint them the right. same way as we're doing today. So with that being said, we um, invite you to join us for our other Modern Mahjong Zooms. We have, hopefully the card will be, we've been told that it's going out on time. So hopefully we'll all have our cards in hand for April 6th for our Zoom talk with Barney. And then we have two strategy talks, one with Donna Miller-Small of Long Island and one with Michelle Frizzell of Mahjong Central. So with that, we will introduce Teresa. <laughs> Hi everyone, thanks for joining us today. Um, we're going to see a video that Daradon and I recorded uh, last week in preparation for today. And uh, we'll, I'll answer any questions you may have if you've already uh, tried to paint tiles or thought about painting tiles. Uh, but like Darren Donna said, today's um, Zoom is primarily focused on Catalan or Bakelite tiles. They are the, the easiest to repaint, um, but there are a variety of, you know, Bakelite and Catalan tiles out there in the depths of the um, carvings and everything. So we'll hopefully troubleshoot for you and, um, you know, answer any questions you may have. Everything will be on YouTube afterwards, so you can rewatch the videos. And if you have any questions um, when you go to do it yourself, which may be next week or next month, next year, just shoot um, Modern Mahjong um, a message about it and they will forward it to me and I will be happy to help you in any way I can. So enjoy the video and uh, look forward to your questions. Hi, I'm Teresa Benassi. I am here with Darren Donna from Modern Mahjong to go over some tips and tricks on how to refresh your tiles that have paint loss, as well as to remove um, nail polish and also joker stickers. So um, you can watch this video and uh, pause it whenever you need to. And then during the Zoom, we will answer questions and you can also watch it over and over again on YouTube because I did not learn this overnight. This is many sets and many, many tiles that I've had to practice on and went through a lot of um, frustrations and learning curve. Um, most of the stuff that um, I've um, learned was originally from Dee Gallo's instructions, and uh, but I also have um, some other tips and tricks for you. So follow along and good luck. products that I use. I buy um, testers in enamel and then um, I just first I just usually get the starter kit which has a variety of colors um, but over time you know they kind of get mixed in and out based on what I want to do and what colors I need to um, change. Um, so black is a is an easy one. Um, there's a red that matches really well with most reds that is individually sold not in the packet. Um, I also have a testers um, enamel thinner. I also use desolvent. Um, and you don't have to spend a lot of money. I, I just have, I still have the, the bar on here. And, I, and this is the one, um, the paintbrush I use. Um, but it's just teeny tiny. That's all you need. It doesn't have to be perfect. Um, I always use some toothpicks. I have a safety pin. Um, I have a scraper. And I have some a nail file and some sanding pads, um, depending on what is wrong with the tile. Uh, I have paper towels. I usually have a paper plate or a paper bowl and um, scent-free baby wipes. And also um, you can use a magnifying glass. My friend Pam Black gave this to me um, that she um, had from embroidery, but you can also use like a standing one, um, you know, if your eyes aren't so great. Um, I just recently had to 
start using these. <laughs> Not fun. Uh, anyhow, so that's these are the items that I use to refresh my time. Okay. So on these type of uh, Joker stickers, a lot of times you could just you know peel them off and they come off real easy. Um, but sometimes they don't. And um, like this one isn't want to peel off easily with your fingernail. Um, and don't expect your fingernails to survive this unless you want to just use one of these tools. But I just throw it in the water and I just let it sit for a few seconds and I pop it out. These actually come off really well. These flower ones are very popular um, stickers. So I just stick them in there and I wait. And then I take them out. Now you said the water should be hot. The water, water the water should be hot. Yeah, I boil, I put the water in the microwave and then I um. But then it just usually comes right off after a few seconds. And is that it a plastic? This is a plastic um like blade, like blade a, like a razor blade. And if okay. it doesn't come off all the way, I just stick it back in. And then I take this one out. So silly question because we don't want to scrape this one. We don't want to give the wrong information to people. This is not to be cleaning tiles that you're using. This is tiles that you're going to be using as Joker stickers. Because this would this take paint off of tiles if you're putting it in the water? Sometimes it does not. But if you if you need that specific image under that Joker tile for you know, then you need it and you just repaint. Yeah. So it just depends. Sometimes you don't know what's under there. Because every time Don and I hear somebody say that they put their tiles in the dishwasher or anything Wash like that, them, we... Yeah. No, this so doesn't sit for very long. And honestly, I, I, I put the water a little too high. Usually I just submerge it towards just touching. Um, but these are... And Oh, and just as a caveat, we're only doing um, different type of Catalan or tiles. This is not for bone and bamboo. Correct. Because that is a slightly different technique. Um but flowers off of that one. Mm -hmm. And this one is pretty much all the gunk is off. And then it's not perfect, but then you use some Goo Gone or you use Dissolve It. Um, and then the rest of the adhesive will come off. Sometimes you use the pads when the glue doesn't want to come off with the Dissolve It. And I'll just lightly sand it, but then you have to go through the next sanding process to buff it out to make it shiny. Um, and other times I use this when um, I want a joker sticker on top and the, the tile's destroyed, like like the, it's discolored or it's so badly stained from either the nail polish or the sticker. And you put the joker sticker, on, you're gonna put a joker sticker on top, but it's so bumpy that I don't want the Joker sticker to be all lumpy. So I just take this and I sand it down just to make the face smooth so the Joker sticker smooth because it's never gonna be a tile that's gonna ever be used as a face tile. Um, and then the type of nail polish remover I use is the non-acetone. And I just use the, you know, Publix brand. Um, so normally when you are got only a couple of tiles that have paint loss, you're not going to want to repaint your whole set. You just want to take those few tiles and repaint it. So what you're going to have to do is do some chemistry by mixing the colors um, and you'll try to get as close as you can. Um, paint will dry darker than you'll see when it's um, still liquid. So um, just take that into mind. Um, but we're going to, there's this uh, six crack here that was painted on the back. So this is just a junk tile. And I would recommend um, taking some junk tiles and practicing first, because it takes a while to get the technique down. Um, tiles that have a deeper impression are a lot easier to do. Um, I'd have to say you have to have patience of a saint when you want to do the dots, because these can be very difficult, especially if you want more than one color. Um, so. Um, but usually it's just the like the numeral sometimes you just have to repaint and sometimes it's just a little like this so um when it's just a little like this you're going to want to take a toothpick and maybe see if there's any other loose see how the paint just comes right out mm -hmm. you're not going to want to paint over that and and because it'll just pop out eventually so you're going to want to scrape all the paint out mm -hmm. and see if there's any loose paint and then sometimes like the green the green's coming out too So you just scrape it out 
And this one I'd probably get most of it out because this was coming out very easily. But other types like this probably won't come out. Like this one's not coming out. Mm -hmm. So it just depends on the type of paint. Um, and I'll use a bright color so you could see. Normally I pour it in here, but um, shake it well. And the other thing I would tell you is um, there's, I have an issue, what my biggest issue was the fact that the paint dried and then I can't reopen it. So I gotta get a wrench and wrench it open. So I thought of maybe putting a little sheet of wax paper and then closing it mm -hmm. would be easier to open and make my life easier. But you just take a little bit of paint and you just put it inside. Like that. And then usually I'll do, I'll do one more, like I'll do um, another tile while this is like kind of resting for a second. You don't have to be exact because... No, and then usually what I'll do is I'll just blob the excess off. Mm -hmm. And then especially when it's a deep impression, I, I'll just even slide it. And then, but this one didn't dry very well. So um, I didn't leave it on long enough. That's what happened to me when I slid it, the paint just came out. So. Yeah, so you just have to let it sit a little longer. And, and when, it, we had, when we had Tony on one, he showed, he lets his like dry overnight and kind of glob on and then scrape it off. And I have not used that technique. Um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm prone to cut it like I, I cut myself. So I, I would not want to do that. I do have a razor blade um, that I've used in the past on exceptionally shallow mm -hmm. um, carvings where you, you could just barely put the paint on and then you, and you just slightly scrape it off. Um, but I try, I mean, I've given up on those types of sets because it's just way too much time and aggravation. Um, now would you do the red at the same time? I would do the red at the same time, yeah. So now if that red is brighter than the other tiles in the set, what do you do? Well, I'm not, I'm not color matching right. it right now, but. Okay. Um, but if you add black or blue, it'll make it darker? Yeah. If you were doing a whole set, would you do all the one color one and then go back and do all another color? Yes. Okay. Yes, I do. To make my life easier. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So um, I just blob it down so it's less to wipe away later. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes you just have to go over it multiple times. Ooh, sorry. And when do you use the dissolve it? When it's, when it's dry. dry. Okay. And then with the dissolve it, what you do is you put, you have several layers of paper towels, and this is in D's instructions. You need the tiniest little bit. Hmm. And then you put all your paper towels on top, and then, believe it or not, there's dissolve it on that yeah, top one. I probably use too much. And That's then you just That's rub. Very cool. Yeah, I used a lot more than that. <laughs> and, the and you'll right see, off. yeah, so, okay. and it'll wipe it off, so. And that's interesting because a friend of ours tried to touch up hers, and when we were playing, the paint was coming off on her you mat. So that's good. Yeah. That, yeah, she didn't. She skipped this step. See, and you just. I mean, so the littlest. I literally just very lightly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's. Very nice. Beautiful. And it's. It's. I would do probably one more layer of color. Mm -hmm. Um. Because yeah, it's not this is a great way just to give the viewers but the, six, this, the idea. Of the how to six do it. worked out fine. I think the the um, six. Cinogram needs a little bit more and the red's fine mm -hmm. now. No, that's great. Yeah. So one of the things I want to point out is when you have something that's really intricate like this, sometimes it's hard to just use the dissolve it only. So what I do is I either get a toothpick and I just dunk it in the enamel thinner and I lightly remove the paint that way or sometimes I'll get a Q-tip, and there's different types of Q-tips. Um, you know, some have a, the, the big bulb, edge. and some have the pointy edge. Or you just remove the cotton and just have the the stick, and then also that might you just lightly get rid of the stuff, and that way you're not removing the paint you put on because sometimes it'll just naturally come off, and it's some tiles are just very difficult to to get it perfect. It takes a lot of practice and a lot of tries. So don't get frustrated because um, we've all been there.
with some questions. One thing I wanted to say is that I would you I bought the dissolve it. It's not easy to find. Um, I had to go to a appliance store. Well, now they have it on we do Amazon. Have, okay. now I just sprayed some on a paper towel and then rubbed the tile and all the paint came off. So one thing if you notice, Teresa, you know, sprayed a little on and then put like four paper towels on top of it and it seeped through because my paint just kept coming off and I couldn't figure out why. <laughs> so that was Yeah, it, the the dissolvent is um potent and you just need the tiniest little bit i would not buy the big spray bottle but um ace hardware usually carries ace, it and right. to carry this yeah. the spray bottle if you can get the the tiny little one that you showed in your video yeah. that's all you need you just need a tiny little bit yeah, there are some and um so all the if you're only gonna paint if you're only gonna paint just like oh my red my red dragon is you know, you're only paying one tile or you know less than 10 tiles you just get the testers enamel remover and that would be fine too. Um, but if you're gonna do a whole set and you've got multiple colors drying and you're gonna to wanna to, you know, rub um, that, it's just easier to do it that way. Um, and the, when, when you're rubbing the tile, you, you do different directions and you just do the lightest, you don't really press because you don't want the, um, the dissolvent to enter, like really, you know, enter the groove. So you're just lightly going back and forth so the um, first question about um, supplies we had was, where did you get those cool toothpicks with the little handle? A, a good friend of mine, um, her name is Lucy, and she does a Chinese New Year's party every year, and they were just left over from that. <laughs> and you said, no oh, idea. And she, <laughs> she, yeah, she, she must have gotten it in, you know, um, the Asian section, you know, um, part of town and where she lives in California. But um yeah, I just use whatever whatever toothpicks I have on hand. Um, and while, we have, no. while we have Teresa here, obviously feel free to ask any questions or raise your hand or chat. Um, all the supplies listed are all listed and in our posts about it on Facebook, as well as we we'll included in the YouTube video. And the other thing I wanted, we never said what, how I use a safety pin, but um, when you, lots of times when you have like a very tiny, I like the one dot, the very center of the one dot, I'll just use the safety pin or I'll use a toothpick with just a dab of color and I just dab it right in the middle at the very end. I don't even need to wipe it off. This is just the tiniest little color. Um, yeah, and then, yeah. question. She said, my tiles are Bakelite. Some of the engravings are very shallow. I have the same problem. Also the tiles seem to have other tiny scratches or imperfections on the tile surface. When I tried this, the paint would get caught and stay in the tiny scratches almost better than the engraving part. <laughs> Any suggestions? I would cover the scratches with painter's tape. If you can, if you can, yeah. That's a um, good yeah. I know, yeah. And then, for mine, it was very shallow. I had a soap and it was very shallow and Teresa had said, scrape off any excess paint with a toothpick and get all the old paint out of there right. um, and let it dry longer than I did and then and then there are some tiles. I know that there's certain ones that are just the bane of Teresa's repainting. I mean, there's some that are just exceptionally difficult. But if there's, there's power, some very, yeah, try and get the paint off. Yeah, there's for a while there, they were just mass producing the stuff and really not thinking about quality control. And so the the when they would you know put the impression in, it wasn't really pushing down enough. So some of the tiles you'll see like on the left side, it's deep enough, but down on the right side, it, it's not. So you just have to get a magnifying glass and just do the tiniest little line in there and, and just hope it works. And then, you know, get that razor blade and you just scrape off the excess paint after it's really been dried. Um, but, you know, unless you absolutely love the set, um, you know, it just be prepared to spend a lot of time and frustration realizing, okay, you know, sometimes you do it and, you think it's gonna be great and then you start to scrape it off or you start to wipe it off and it all goes away because it's so shallow um you gotta start all over again so there's there are some sets that i you know that were so shallow that i had to repaint there's always a handful of tiles that i've had to repaint you know five or six times until it just i got it right and a lot of times i have to be in the right frame of mind you know where i'm not going to get frustrated because when i personally when i get frustrated then i mess up and then i get more frustrated so i just Put it aside really? and go on a day where I'm happy and I want to work on it. And then that's Barbara, the I, don't know if I, do. I don't know if Barbara wants to add to her question, but she said, have you tried polish removers? So there are some of the Joker stickers that have the traditional red nail polish 
that you use. Yeah. So, so for the for removing any Joker stickers, um, well, the ones I see mainly, uh, the two main main ones I see are the ones the National Mahjong League sold, which is the red Joker sticker, and those sometimes literally just from the heat just pop right off. Um, and then some stick really well, and you have to put them, submerge them in water. I don't like to use the orange oil at first. I like, you know, the, usually the heat from the water will, you know, make it rise and come off, and you could scrape it off and wipe it off pretty easily. Um, and then the other ones were those funny decals, like the, the flower sticker I showed you, and sometimes it's a duck. A yeah. lot of that was real popular. Those come off beautifully and usually don't make a stain on the tile. Almost all the adhesives do make stains on the tile. And the worst one, just be prepared to be aggravated and, and have disgustingness on your fingers, is um, anything medical tape, medical tape, band-aids. Band that adhesive yeah. is really disgusting. And mm -hmm. um, just, you know, you're going to be really rubbing with a rag. Uh, you know, after you get it all, uh, you know, put it in water and you scrape it off, you'll still have goo. So then you have to use some sort of orange oil, either dissolve it or... Um, What's that other brand of orange oil? Oh, um, anyway, I, Goo Gone yes. or Goo Gone. Uh, and, yeah. um, and just, you're going to have to rub it. And, you know, and maybe after that, you'll have to use a little bit of um, like soap to clean it because it's oily. So um, we love that and people then buff it out. I'm yeah. sorry. We love that people have joined us from all over. And we have Chris, and she was asking what the equivalent of dissolve it is in Scotland. And actually, I just Googled it, and it does show that they sell it. In UK websites, so you might be able to get to solve it directly. So okay, so <laughs> or you can just use test. It, you know, the solvent's cheaper if you're going to do a lot of tiles. Otherwise, just use enamel remover. Yeah, testers. You know, if, if you're not going to do a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I did see someone ask about if do I put a sealant over it? No, right. I have not. Right. I have not done that because I haven't had any issues with um, the tiles I've repainted. Um, you're so good. At it. <laughs> You're a professional. Um, OP says, what products would you not use on Bakelite? Is that too open-ended? <laughs> soap, soap and water. I would not, don't ever put your Bakelite tiles in, you. in a dishwasher. Don't ever put your Bakelite tiles in a uh, bin of soap and water. Can you name that? Are you saying that? <laughs> Do not um, I had I had a girlfriend, she had a vintage set and she called me up and she's like, you told me not to, you told me not to. But I, I, someone was coughing and playing the tiles and I thought I'm going to throw this in the sink and just wash them. And she didn't even use like hot water. And she literally saw the paint just lifting off. Oh. And you never know. Like, I, I mean, I have, I do have some tiles that I've really scrubbed and nothing happens, you know, that I'm just going to use for Joker stickers and others, you know, the paint will come right off. It just depends on the composition of the plastic is on the qual you know, the paint, the conditions up until you got it, you have no idea. You know, if it went from hot to cold and cold to hot or, you know, sometimes that stuff just deteriorates. Um, Heidi has a good question. What size paintbrush are you using? Because when I saw you doing it, I realized my paintbrushes were too thick. Yours is really I, thick. I, I went to Michael's with my 40% off coupon and I just bought the least expensive, teeniest, tiniest mm -hmm. brush they had with a handle that I liked. Mm -hmm. it, it doesn't matter. You're not painting a Picasso. You're not you're not doing fine, you know, I mean, yes, you're doing fine lines, but it's, it doesn't have to be perfect because you're going to wipe it away. It's not like you're painting an oil painting and you need that brush to make, you know, little birds or something. So it, whatever you've got, as long as it's just a, you know, little tiny bit, you don't need a very, um, like, I don't even know what to say. I don't even have any millimeters. It's little, there's little. I mean, you were little saying, or, little or the best. if you just have one or two tiles, you can even just use a toothpick, like that'll work. Just yeah. Yeah, there's no, you don't just use a toothpick because you just need to put the paint in there. So, and then what I do is, so when I do, when I do paint, I put, um, I'll do like sometimes three or four tiles, depending on the humidity here in Florida, it's sometimes very humid. So I have to wait, but if it's not a humid day, I'll do less tiles. And then I, I let it sit. And then what I'll do is I'll just blot it down on the paper towel just to remove excess paint. Um, so it's just less to have to clean away later. Um, and then like the ones that are deeper carvings, I'll actually slide, you know, just to get rid of it. Um, so someone asked a question, how do I safely clean my Bakelite tiles? Um, when I get a set, Grody, usually I don't 
I don't know where, I think people must keep them in garages or something. But so I think some creatures must crawl through the, the cases because there's some deposits left. Um, I use, I get a, um, like a fluffy um, old hand uh, face towel. Um, and so I wipe down my tiles with non-scented baby wipes and then I immediately dry them. So I'll do like, if I put them in a, um, the cases, like in the tile trays, I'll do a wipe and then I'll dry. Um, but if they're really gross, then I get um, the bake light, the baby wipe, and I'll just, you know, really scrub it down. And, but then I dry it. Um, I don't use soap um, or water. Um, but then I dry it as I go. I don't let it sit wet. And to further on that, how do you safely store your tiles? Do you ever leave them in the car? Do you ever? No. Okay, that was a softball. No, don't, don't, <laughs> don't. Like you won't leave your dog or your baby in the car? Don't leave your mahjong tiles in your car. No, and unless, unless it's like some really inexpensive set that you're you like, you know, you don't care about. It's your beach. You, you play with it on the beach, you know? But um, no, mm, I would leave it in inside your house where you feel comfortable. Your mahjong tiles need to feel comfortable. And, and so another thing whatever environment. About how not stacking it, that after a certain, if you have the trumpet cases, you shouldn't stack them over, I think it's like three, three. high. I don't even do that. I, well, I do two max, um, but I have shelves. So I put everything on in shelves. And then if you have, um, if you wanted, some people I know have those um, metal shelves you build, you know, like you put in your garage. And, but then they put each pillowcase, they go to Salvation Army or Goodwill or something, and they buy old pillowcases and they put each trumpet case in a pillowcase to keep the dust off. The other thing I would do, which is not what we're talking about today though, is every so often um, I take WD-40 and I clean the hinges and grease them up because those locks get sticky and they're old. So they need, they need the little help, they need a little love. So you just put a little WD-40 on your, on your locks and hinges and that'll keep your case fresh too. Um, so Heidi had asked, what colors in the reds, greens, blues do you recommend from Tester? Um, originally I just used the starter kit. And then um, I noticed that the red was a little brighter than I needed. Some red dragons are perfect for that red, um, but I have some older sets that the red was had darkened over time. And it's just, you just go to the store they and Michael's has a whole display of them and I just pick one that I thought kind of like bring the, I bring the tiles with me and I kind of just put it next to the paint and I go mm -hmm. oh yeah it's kind of the same color and uh and I got that one and then sometimes I pick really crazy colors because I'm like oh I, this whole set needs to be redone so I'm gonna pick any colors I want and um you know so it's up to you it's your set you can do whatever you want you don't have to you know make it perfect you know you don't have to follow the same colors if you're doing all new all all the tiles. If you're doing one tile, then, you know, bring sample tiles and just put it next to each other and just know that the paint dries a little darker. So we have a question from Debbie. Can scratches be sanded out? They can be buffed out um, depending on how deep they are, um, but know that the color will also come down. So the outside of the Bakelite tiles are dark, but as you buff and sand, you're taking away the, the darkness and it'll get lighter and lighter. So if, especially if it's the back of the tile, you have to know that that tile now might be like a marked card, like, oh, there's the lightest one, that's the two crack. Right. Um, so sometimes it's just better to keep the scratch than to try to buff it out because you'll, you'll see the color difference. And so, on that note, um, you had taught us um, with certain tiles, if you do have tiles that you brought in to be jokers, that you can actually bake them. But it was interesting because mm -hmm. we kind of did an experiment. Her oven didn't change the color at all. And mine changed the color. I think it was at 350, wherever you told me the temperature. But within two minutes, they were the color. And thank goodness you told me to take them out that they keep getting darker because I took them out early enough and they darkened enough and it was a great match. So it was something that I've had tiles, so I put it in at 250 and uh, 225 to 250, depending on the thickness of the tile. And after a while, some, you get a feel for which tiles you think are going to take a long time or not. But I did have a whole set. I was trying to, the set came in all modeled, like, like really crazy, you know, vast difference in color. So I wanted to get it all one color and the ones that were light literally took hours. I mean, I would work on it and I'd let it go. And, and just what happens is it's just like, Finally, it's ready to change over. You know what I mean? Um, but that's rare. Most of the time, it 
seven or eight minutes it shouldn't take but always i keep checking it like every after two minutes i would take it out and look and the tiles continue to you know um deepen in color so if it's a few shades different i just pull it out and let it sit and then when it cools down then i'm like okay let's see how it looks with the set if it's you know if you have a most sets have some sort of shade variation you know they're not perfectly uniform it's hard to find um so you know as long as it's close and it's not noticeable and then you could you do is you could play with it and say okay i've got it you know tell your friends hey you know does anyone notice anything different like is anything standing out as a mar marked tile um and if they're like yeah that one right there that that's the green dragon i know it because of the color difference then you, you can go back and put it in the oven a little bit longer and you know, and then take it out again and ask them, okay, how is it now? Um, but you're better off being erring on the side of caution because tile matching and size matching everything is, it's hard. You know, sometimes you'll never get your set right. So, you know, it's better to take your time than to overdo it and ruin a tile. Yeah, I know Tony Watson had said it took him 30 minutes, an hour. You know, you just have to watch it and be very careful because as Dara said, it didn't work for me. But our ovens might have been different. I use a toaster oven kind of thing. I use a toaster oven. Yeah. 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 But I, it's not it's not the oven, it's the tile. Yeah. So there's been a few questions about the sanding pads. Um, I had bought them on Amazon and you use them in the video. Amazon. So is that where you would suggest buying them? That's where I found them. Yeah. Um, and um, and keep the card. There's a card that says the different grits. Right. And so I'll start with depending on what I need to sand, I'll start with um one and then i just go and then i'll do a few and then go down 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 to the you know the the smoothest one and really try to buff it out um but i don't have to do that too often especially if i'm using it for joker sticker. if we missed anybody's question feel free to raise your hand or type it again i think we covered um we answered for chris but i think you would agree that for chinese bakelite with the oven i know i saw somebody experimenting with it but it's not the same with it darkening the tiles um i i've had okay luck with it i haven't had to do it much um i've usually with chinese bake light what i usually do is actually sand because chinese bake light you could sand pretty fast and get the color down the problem with chinese bake light is it doesn't it's hard to get uniform color when you're sanding um but that you can also put in the sun and it'll, it'll darken up pretty fast so um chinese bake light sets if you find if you find one that that has 152 tiles and all the tiles are the same color and size, grab it because it is really difficult to complete one and make it perfect. It's just really hard. So um, one of the questions was, do you let the paint sit overnight? And Tony Watson from England was going to try to be on the call but couldn't. He does let it sit overnight and he lets mm -hmm. it harden, but um, he then uses a razor blade to scratch it off. He uses a knife. He knife. uses like a like yeah. a, like a I want, it's not Smith and Wesson, what's a, a Swiss army knife. Yeah. So he like uses a Swiss army knife and he holds it and he could, he could oh, do that. And I don't, he has, must have amazing grip strength. <laughs> and, and I cut myself like chopping vegetables. So there's no way I can do that. No, 152 tiles. So um, the only thing I've ever done is the razor blade. And that's usually what I would, when I had to do one of those sets, I would do like five or six tiles at a time because it's, it hurt my fingers. Um, but uh, I usually don't let it dry overnight because I don't, I don't need to, um, you know, it just a few minutes works. Um, but I could see him because he globs it on. And it, so it has to, it has to get all, through all that layer of liquid to dry to the bottom and then scraping um, where I don't, I don't, um, I glob, I, you know, I blot it off. So it's just down shallow. Um, but I, yeah, I would like to see how he does it because I, I don't have that ability. He's, he's got, you know, different technique that works really well because he's painted tiles for me. He's carved, he's done some stuff for me and, and the stuff is perfection. So he's very good at what he does. So Pam asked a question, do you begin with the darker or lighter colors first? Also, do you paint from the inside of the design first? No, no, no I just pick a color and go from there. Yeah, I'll do like all black. And then especially if the tiles have multiple colors, I'll just do all the colors on the tile and then um, and then let it sit and then take it off. Um, but because um, usually there's more than one color on a tile. Um, but if it's like the BAMs where it's all like the ones that are all green 
um, and then the number's a different color, it's easy to wipe the number or just wipe the BAMs and not do the other color. Um, but, are there certain yeah. tiles that you just know are going to be more difficult or the dots or the flowers? The dots are really challenging because you have you know, the circle and then you have the, you know, some, especially when they're the flowers and you have two colors or you have the, you know, the color, color, color. Um, so just take your time, use a magnifying glass, have a steady hand, you know, don't, you know, be hydrated. <laughs> you don't want to be dehydrated <laughs> with a shaky hand. Um, and yeah, those, those are time consuming and, um, don't do too much at one time. Just, That's, you know, just, or you could just make it all one color, you know, and be like, whatever it's, you know, especially if you had a whole thing of dots that had, you know, no color, like the two we have in the video. Um, but the funny things I did want to point out when you guys go back to watch the video, the tile that I was using the toothpick to scrape out all the paint at the very end, I had repainted it while we were sitting there. And the only thing I hadn't done was the number. So that turned out really well really fast. I mean, I just did it while we were talking and um, it was fine. Um, Stacy had a question. Have you used any other paints besides testers? No, but I did, you know, at night when you're like, oh, I'm gonna scroll through Instagram videos and see what's going on. There was one video on this painting technique where they pour the paint and it's spit like a, a you know, modern version of the spinning thing when your kids are in the carnival. And it was, um, so I saved it because I wanted to, I wanted to talk about it today. So thank you for that. Um, let me see what it is. It is called liquid text, L I Q U I D T E X paint. And, um, it, and the reason why it caught my eye was because it, it looked like it had a dropper and I thought, Oh, that might be better and I won't have a problem with having to, you know, have a hard time getting the lid off. So I think I might, um, I might try that um, next time. Um, but yeah, they, they have it and Michael's apparently has it and it's, um, they have enamel. So I was gonna try that next time, but no, I've only used testers so far. Deborah Davidson had an interesting question. Is there a specific way to stack or store vintage painted tiles inside the case? For example, painted faces touching each other or not, or the bottom of the box or not? Again, um, I, I, you know, unless, you, unless you're living somewhere where, I, I mean, it, I, just put, I just put my tiles back in, usually face up um, on top of each other. Um, if you really were concerned about that, what I would do is I'd buy acid-free tissue paper and put it face up, acid-free tissue paper, and then another layer. Um, I would never, if you're, if you're concerned about which way they're facing and if they have to be paint to paint or paint to, you know, the, the bottom of the tile, then just do a layer of, of acid-free tissue paper. Um, a lot of my very good sets, um, especially in the old five stack cases, the bone and bamboo that where the varnish leaches the color out, um, I put, acid-free paper down on the bottom of the trays. But my Bakelite tiles and stuff, they're all stored in air conditioning, so I'm not overly worried about it. I haven't had, I haven't had an issue so far, um, but if I was gonna do anything, I would just stack it with um, acid-free tissue paper in between the layers. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, sure, go ahead. Oh, hum, mm, can you hear me? Yes, you're good. Yes, yes. great, okay, good. Um, Janine Morphus just texted me back. So she's been using, uh, it's called Humbral, that kind of paint. Mm -hmm. Have you heard of that? Yeah. Did you mention? I have, Did I but we don't, I, I live in a tiny town, so I don't, oh, okay. we, you know, we get what we get. Right, um, well, we get what so we get I everywhere like, right now. <laughs> yeah. Supply chain, okay, I just wondered if you've used that before. I haven't, I've only used testers, but I, I, I wouldn't be adverse to trying it, okay. you know. Okay. Um, yeah. Can you, you just spell the last style. name of the liquid? Well, it was IDTX. It was, it was liquid. This is the way you spell liquid and then TEX. TEX. Okay, liquid test. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. And then Debbie Barnett was asking um, that she is a Dremel, Debbie. I mean, I don't know what Teresa's going to say, but I think <laughs> I see from Teresa's expression. I think that would be way too strong. Yeah. I mean, you, you, yeah. have, I'm sure you have spare tiles you could experiment with, but I would not do that with something that, and, and you any know, of these, no. if any of these, if this is the first time you're doing it, 
Hopefully you have a spare tile somewhere that you can experiment with and see how it goes and then practice on that. And you could wipe off the paint and start again. Yeah, if you've ever had your nails done, I, I like, or do you know what the Dremel can do? Yeah. And it can be a little harsh, mm -hmm. you have to be careful. Yeah, I mean, anything you wouldn't do to your own nails, don't. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but I will tell you that I, I do have um, there's some French ivory tiles that were too thick, but they were color and shape match perfectly. They're just thickness. Everything else was great except for thickness. So I just went in my garage and went through my husband's sanding stuff and took out some sanding pads without him knowing. And I just went like this, you know, for a long time until I got the French ivory tile to the same thickness as the set and because these are gonna be jokers anyway um so you know but if you're gonna do any sanding yeah let me just make sure you know if you're gonna do any sanding you really should wear a mask because all that stuff is made with formaldehyde or plastics and you don't want to breathe into your lungs so you should be a well-vented area uh wear you know goggles and a mask um for safety um and and take your time you know so but i wouldn't use any machinery i would every everything has to be done by hand only because it goes it can go very fast and unless you have extra tiles right. you know um now you had said it's good to practice on you know extra tiles and i agree yeah um yeah. that's and then, funny yeah. heidi <laughs> heidi can we see your mahjong room <laughs> Teresa. <laughs> she drinks the water uh, next question um so we somebody asked um does the dissolvent say laundry i think there might be a few different dissolvents you're talking about the one that's a citrus solution that's on it right mm -hmm. yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so yeah. we really appreciate this and i think that when people watch it over just if you're kind of new to youtube you can pause it as you're watching it. So if there's something you're watching and you want to see what she's doing, you could hit pause and then resume later on. So I think that would be very helpful for everybody who has thought about doing this or has already started doing it and now can improve their game. So we'll unmute if anybody wants to say hello or ask the last question. Thank you, Teresa. We really appreciate Teresa, it. Teresa, thank you. You're welcome. Very great. busy woman, so we appreciate it. Thank you. It. Yeah. Thanks, I'm, thanks, learning thank you. I'm anxious to try it. Oh, awesome. Oh, good. Hey, Debbie. Yeah, we see so many friends. That's nice. <laughs> yeah, so if you if you get stuck or come across something that wasn't covered here, you're more than welcome to message Modern Mahjong and, um, you know, look at um, and ask some questions. Oh, and the other thing I want to tell you, if you would like to meet me in person, Come to MoshCon in October in yes. Boca Raton because we will be doing a presentation and Dara Donna will be there and Debbie and Burnett will be there. And there's gonna be Nell's so gonna much be more there. stuff and you will learn and you can ask questions and you can probably even bring your stuff and go, well, hell, what do I do? Um, so, you know, there's lots of talks coming up that Dara and Donna are doing and then all the stuff in person, you know, at Modern Mo at, um, MoshCon, you know, there's a lot of good stuff coming this year. So stay tuned. And today yes. is International Women's Day, so we yes. um, normally say how Mahjong is not just for women. Today we are celebrating all the women, mm -hmm. all of the women that we work with, all the women that we've met and connected with, and it's just been an amazing, I mean, we just started this in 2019, and we were having a great time with this business, and then in 2020, the two of us just realized that people can't get together, and we really thought Mahjong would be a connecting force. So... It's really nice. And we're going to see Amy. We'll see Amy soon. Yep. She's having a tournament to raise money for Alzheimer's, which is wonderful. And thanks to all of you who pre-ordered your cards from us. We raised, we know we raised at least 20,000, but it will be in excess of 20,000 for Alzheimer's. So that was just an amazing number that we were thrilled to get to. Yes. And according to the Mahjong League, the cards will be sent yep. out on time. They were smart enough to order the paper they early. need for the cards early. And so it's oh, mailed out the end of the month, yeah. hopefully. <laughs> so we um, we already have a um, almost a thousand people signed up for Barney's review. So we have room for a thousand people. So 
be sure to sign on. It's April 6th at 7 Eastern time at night. So be sure to sign on right away because the first thousand people that get there will be admitted. And we want to thank Debbie Barnett and Michelle Frizzell. They sponsored, they sponsored us, our, event. our Zoom call. So we can get up to a thousand people. So we really appreciate that. Appreciate that. Yeah. Because we know and last before, year. I want to interrupt. Someone made a good point um, about using opening up a paper clip as well. Like that's another tool you could use as a uh, oh, safety cool. pen. Oh, yeah. yeah. Thank you, Diane. Yep. Very good. Okay. Well, have a nice day, everybody. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful day. All right. for joining Thank us. you, everyone. Yeah. Pam, I'll um, see you soon for two-person yeah. mahjong. Thank, Thank you. you. All right. Yeah. Bye, everyone.